okay, we'll get you a uterus. How much is it? Uh, 50 pesos, whatever. Because that's the money that Pachita had to pay the doctors, you know, to get the specimen from the university hospital, etc. So a uterus would be brought over and was put in a mason jar, stuck in a family refrigerator, and there it sat <laughs> until the patient came along. And then the patient, when she came, was laid on the table and just slid over with a big knife, and this incredible big hunting knife, all black with years of surgery, never cleaned, just like Argo saying, I mean, oxidized to death. And she just slid her open, the knife would go in about four inches, no pain, the patient would be looking at the ceiling. And she'd take this uterus and she'd plop it in. I mean, I'm saying plop in. There was no attempt to line anything, no attempt to put sutures in, no attempt to, you know, restore the vascular bed. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, you just couldn't believe it when you're looking at this. And uh, anyway, then I followed the case, and sure enough, a couple of months later, she still had the uterus, hadn't rejected it, and she'd get pregnant, and I followed her, and she had a baby. And she'd do that. I mean, the funny stories you can't believe. I remember an American came down to be operated on, okay, and she had liver cirrhosis. She'd been drinking many years. So uh, she was laid out on the table, and I could speak to her because she was, you know, American and very casual. And I asked her, you know, how she feel as the knife is cutting her open. And she said, I don't feel anything. And then a fly would land on her nose, and she'd knock it off, you know. She'd feel here, but not over here. So anyway, finally, uh, Pachita looked in there, you know, kind of spread the thing. She said, mm, I think this one is different. So she went in with the knife and, and kind of, like, take a liver and she's just slicing it. She's just chopping it, okay? Like, chop <laughs> liver. <laughs> Is it bleeding? <laughs> yeah, that's blood, but it's nothing serious. You know, oozy, not real hemorrhage, right? This is absolutely <laughs> true. I'm going to take you on one of these trips. I'm going in two weeks to Brazil to do this thing again. Okay, so she calls, she tells her assistant, you know, go to the refrigerator and get out that liver. So go to the liver comes out with a mason jar and plops the liver on a piece of paper. He said, I think we'll homogenize this one, you know, in Spanish. I don't know what the hell they mean, homogenize. So they bring over the wearing blender, <laughs> throws the liver into the, <laughs> into the wearing blender, and gets all chopped up, real chopped liver. And she opens this thing up and she pours the chopped liver into it. This is the donor liver she's pouring. I mean, talk about shocks in my life. And I witnessed this and we filmed it and we looked at it. Anyway, she'd push the wound together and the patient would lay on the floor a few hours and get up and go home. And they, they always did great. And she transplanted all kinds of organs, including brain operation. I mean, it was just unbelievable, you know. How she, like a kid with uh, Down syndrome, big head, you know, hydrocephalus. And she'd just take a knife and split the skull like it was grapefruit and it would fall apart. And me, Dotting Thomas, I'd stick my finger in to make sure she'd gone through the skull and, you know, through the dura and so on. Sure enough, she was in the skull. She'd plunge a knife in and swirl it around, totally brute force blind, and then shove the skull together and followed the case in a couple of weeks, the head was shrunk, the kid was normal, and so on and so on. Okay, this is psychic surgery. Now, it's all tied up with Aragon. I'm going to wrap this up. About two years ago, actually, a year and a half ago, I started getting messages from Brazil that an MD, a legitimate MD, an OBGYN man, suddenly goes into trance one day in the operating room and starts operating like I just told him all <laughs> with the dirty knife, the rotten technique. <laughs> anyway, they kind of, you know, locked him up for a while after they thought he'd, you know, gone flip -o. But they found out nothing wrong with him. He just slipped in a trance and he'd done this thing. So some local spiritualists heard about the case, brought him over to their little church, and they, uh, they said, you know, you're a medium. You're, and so they worked with him, and pretty soon this Dr. Fritz that was operating <coughs> through... Uh, uh, Arago was talking through this guy. Now, our research team was the only of the eight of us, and everybody was a linguist, and we had tape recording, we had movies, blah, 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 and we got to know Dr. Fritz very well. The only ones who can really validate whether the Fritz talking now through his Dr. Edson, the MD, <coughs> the same as the one through Arago, was a simple peasant, no education, nothing. So 
So I keep getting these messages from Dr. Fritz, come down, I want to talk to you. So I sent a, some people down to do some filming, and I looked at it, and sure enough, it's just like Argo. I sent an anthropologist down <clears> the <throat> last few months, and she wrote back reports. Yeah, it looks like it's genuine, and people love them, and nobody seems to get hurt. But finally, I organized this expedition. I'm leaving in two weeks, and I'm going to go down and see Dr. Fritz. I'm going to take videotapes and so on. <laughs> and if we ever get together, I'll show you what, what he looks like and what he operates. But my intention this time, I've had many years' experience, is to see if we can get him into the United States, get him into a first-class medical setup, even if it's a total secret operation, and study him as long as we can and document the kind of wild things I'm telling you, and see, like, for example, I want to learn why this little old lady in Brazil had no rejection phenomenon. In other words, she took untyped human tissue and dumped it into anybody, and there was never a rejection. You know, it's one of the big problems in cardiac transplants and liver transplants and all that. So that's our first goal, okay? I heard that there was a Brazilian who was brought to the United States and he couldn't do the work outside of his home territory. I know that's, that, that, kind of a legend, but I know it's not true in this case because Arago would go all over different parts of Brazil. For example, the president of Brazil would call him to, uh, you know, the capital of Brazilia and he'd try to on the bio and do the same there as anywhere. There may be some people who, you know, need a lot of support in their environment. That's not necessarily true. They can work anywhere. There was some stories about David St. Clair's roommate like that, and it wasn't true. What was his, who was that? Um, He's watching here in... Uh, I know, he is, he is reported on Pachita, he's reported yeah, on Aragorn, he's a very... But it's his roommate was the one he brought up from Brazil, and they were, he kind of got some hassles, and people put out remarks like that about him. Yeah, I don't know, he's just a natural... Sorry, but there's a lot of stuff yeah. going around like that. Why do you even want to develop in it too much when it's already openly completely... You don't split a hydrocephalus baby and open the skull up and dig in there with a knife and close it up. I mean, after you've seen that, what else is there to see? Well, we have to remember we're researching that. We want to take the clock apart and see what makes it tick. And in this case, there's a, we want to know why it is. And there are ways of measuring this. It's not impossible. Why they do not get the rejection phenomenon. I mean, it's just, and I think we can find out. Right? What if it's harmonic levels, though? What if it's changing the frequency? That would try to measure, you see. We don't know. But uh, I think it'll take an extended period of time, three to six months, just to work on simple types of cases we can get away with. Uh, maybe even do animal work, I don't know. But the point is, there is something there that modern medicine and everybody could benefit from. Or the ability to operate without causing pain. I'll give you a small example of how that works. One of our chief translators was a German lady who spoke about eight languages, because in Brazil there are a lot of different languages, not just Portuguese. And all her life she just can't stand the sight of blood. She sees blood and she keels over. When we went down there, and she was in Aragos' presence and was doing the uh, translation, and he was out with and she felt perfectly fine. Okay, we filmed all this stuff. We got back to the States and we reviewed our film. The first scene she saw was blood she keeled over, you know. So there are these things that have got to be explained. There's something that's working, and, and I'm sure it's within, I don't think it's supernatural. In other words, I don't think the spirit is really preventing the pain. I think it's like the DLF stuff, the hand goes out, it puts out certain frequencies, it blocks certain pain pathways, uh, DNA is stimulated, prevents infection, and a lot of things. The immune system is stimulated. <coughs> we have enough sophistication to tackle the problem now. 20 years ago, we didn't have the sophistication, we didn't have the experience, we didn't have the equipment, etc., etc. Now we have a deeper understanding of healing processing, and we know people can be taught this sort of stuff. So anyway, that didn't answer your question. Why not ask Fred a little bit? Oh, we do. Uh, we, you know, we, we don't miss a trick. You know, we, ask, we ask Fred. But that's one of the reasons I'm going down there to talk to Fred to get his permission to go ahead with this course. And if he disapproves, of course, forget it. I'll have to cancel the idea. But no, this is all done with, you know, consent. So, anyway, I think it's a very exciting possibility. It opens up <laughs> a lot of vistas in medicine which don't exist. In the book you said that 
You actually operated on one with the Regal. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, he taught me to operate that. Right. I was able. You mean you can do it too? Now? I never tried. I'm chicken. <laughs>